The Human Genome Project has led to the development of targeted DNA testing. It can go a long way to identify diseases that we might be afflicted with, from assessing chances of cancer to why your body might not take to a particular diet. It could have disastrous consequences for insurance premiums, though. Think about that. This is Tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. And tonight, I'm joined by Dr. Danny Mayersfield, Chief Executive of DNA Analysis, a biotechnology company that uses DNA testing to offer solutions on diet, health, even be able to test athlete's sports prowess with the swipe of a cotton wool swab. I'm delighted that he's left his cotton wool swabs at home because you might find that I'm completely useless in most sports, Danny. Um, th this, this concept of DNA, we, we're used to the idea, we watch uh, American cop dramas, we hear about DNA being used to solve decades-old crimes. Uh, the Human Genome Project has liberated just so much human science, hasn't it? Well, it did. I mean, it's fundamentally changed the concept of how we look at genetic testing. It used to be, as you say, very much around the forensic application or very much ab around the disease uh, application where parents would consult the genetic counselor looking at risk for disease in, in potential offspring that they might have. What uh, the yeah. knowledge from the human genome has done is move the, the knowledge that we have into the space of, of health and wellness and disease prevention as opposed to so disease management, which in turn has changed the entire healthcare paradigm and will continue to change it over the coming years as we learn more and more. Now we know about Angelina Jolie. She took a decision to have a double mastectomy based on her propensity to develop breast cancer. Right. Family history, all of that sort of stuff. Did she do this kind of DNA testing to get to that decision? So she would have done a, a DNA test for a, a gene called BRCA, the breast cancer gene, which is what we call high penetrance in the sense that if you have the mutation, there will be a very good chance that breast cancer does manifest. Uh, I think it's upwards of an 80% chance that you will develop breast cancer if you have mutations in those genes. Okay, so that is, so she would have had that particular test okay. done, um, which is a form then of, 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 of DNA testing. Exactly. Um, it's, as I said, it's what we call high penetrance testing, um, and, and she would have tested based on her family history, on other risk factors that she might have had an awareness of, she would have taken a decision to, to do that test and then would have been counseled as to the consequences of the results and how, wh what her options were in terms of managing the information that she would have received. But that's what's so important, isn't it? Because I mean, every time you develop a cough, and it's a bit different from last time, you go online and you search coughs that are different from last time, yeah. you get told that you've got tuberculosis. Um, it, it's that sort of man in the street research well, which, yeah, which can use information like this and do quite a lot of harm. The I way suspect. in which the information is put across is, is hugely important. And the companies that sell the tests, such as my own, and the healthcare practitioners who sell the tests in their practice, um, education is incredibly important, training is important. It's important to look at the tests in the context of the healthcare practice. So if we go back to Angelina Jolie a second, even though there's an 80% chance of getting breast cancer in the presence of those mutations, only about 5 to 10% of all breast cancers are actually as a result of mm -hmm. those mutations. Um, there are so many other, uh, other variables that can um, add up to your risk for breast cancer, of which many are genetic and many we look at, but by themselves aren't enough to cause cancer. But this is a yet just another tool in diagnosing risks. That's e all it really exactly, is. Exactly, exactly. So, so what, what we look at is we, we specialize in low penetrance genetic testing. What's the, the difference between high and low penetrance? High penetrance means that if you have the genetic mutation, there's a very good chance that the disease will manifest. With low penetrance, we're looking at genetic changes which can increase your likelihood of disease, but by themselves will not be causative. They will be a risk factor where if you then have these mutations or these ver gen genetic variations, um, they are cumulative with other risk factors such as the environment that you place yourselves in, the environmental exposures you have, your lifestyle habits, your nutrition, all of these become cumulative risk factors. But this would then be quite useful in the practice of a, a good dietitian. I'm sure you've got good dietitians, average dietitians, and ones that yeah. aren't so good. Um, a good dietitian would, be, uh, would prescribe lettuce leaves and all of that sort of stuff, but utilizing DNA information analysis surely would help tailor product better than saying, oh, just go and do banting or whatever the latest fad is. Well, in the, in the dietetic practice, it's very much a tool that gives additional insight into the dietitian's client or patient. So traditionally, if the patient wasn't losing weight, the only possible reason was that they were cheating. Now we know, based on our genetics, that we will respond differently to different dietary interventions. Some people have genetic barriers to overcome. 
they will take longer to lose weight even though they're on the same diet. And we all know this intuitively. We all mm -hmm. know that the diet that worked for our mother, our sister, our brother hasn't been as effective for us. And now we're getting to the root of why that is the case and understanding the genetic influences that are at play in determining how we go about losing weight. Traditionally, skinny individuals say, oh, they've got a great metabolism. Metabolism and DNA uh, related? Well, th there's so many aspects mm. that, that are related. The, the, the lifestyle, the environment, the, uh, you know, if a person is working a, an eight to six job um, and has less time to, to eat healthy, there are just so many factors at play that the dietitian will take into account. Um, one of, the, one of the genes in our test, for example, looks at the influence of exercise on, on weight loss. There are some individuals who, whether they're on a low-fat or a low-carbohydrate diet, they will not respond um, mm. to that diet without doing high-intensity exercise. Um, sorry for those guys. No, absolutely, but, that, yeah. but, but that, that's the, the reality. But it gives us the science to back up a program that you're doing. Exactly. But again, in the wrong hands, this, this, this information is potentially dangerous. It is potentially dangerous, and I think the point to make is that the information we're providing is not scary information. All of the genes that we look at, be it in our, our diet, in our weight loss test, in the health test, in the estrogen test that we look at, all of the genetic variations that we're analyzing can be overcome. The effect of those genetic variations can be overcome because the genes themselves can't change. But the effect of those genes can be overcome with the appropriate diet, nutrition, or lifestyle intervention. So we are giving people information that can empower them to lead healthier lifestyles to understand what their optimal dietary plan would be, what the optimal nutrition intake would be to, to bring down the risk of chronic disease. You know, so much, I mean, I, I don't know the, the figure offhand, but upwards of 80%, I believe, of chronic diseases of lifestyle are mm -hmm. completely avoidable. But, but here, here raises an interesting point. At what point does our health insurer say to us, I will insure you, but only if you have this test and then only if you act on the, uh, on the guidance that the test gives you? I mean, is that, is that the future of health insurance, for Well, example? we certainly know we're close to that. When these tests came out in the States 10, 12 years ago, when the human genome sequence was first released, a lot of the fear mongering around them and the criticism of them was that the insurance would, companies would use the results to load your premiums or to prejudice you. And, and none of that has ever materialized, and I'm not sure that it would. Uh, one of the big American insurance companies came out, the CEO came out and said he's far more interested in the fact that somebody is prepared to have the test done than he is in the results of the test. And that's uh, good PR, though. Do you really believe him? Come I on. do believe him. I do believe him because <laughs> the test shows. No, but that, but that's an it shows an intent to change, doesn't it? I mean, exactly. That's, well, that's yeah. the point. They're, they're powerful motivators to mm. change behavior. And one of the hardest things to do in the healthcare industry is to change people's behavior. The genetic test, as good as the science is and as valuable as the information is, as a motivator to change, I think it's it's better than anything else there is. Um, and also, it's a bit of a contradiction from the insurance companies because they ask you your family history anyway. So yes. isn't that using, using genetic information? I mean, now, what is the difference between knowing my family history, knowing the predisposition of generations of my family to certain conditions and ailments, and actually getting my DNA tested? Is it because lifestyles are different now to what they would have been 50, 100, well, 200 I, years I just ago? think we have so much more knowledge now. So you might know that the family history of of cardiovascular disease or, or whatever it might be, but what we can do is pinpoint where those risk factors are. So instead of just saying cardiovascular disease as a whole, we can point to specific genes, specific areas of your physiology, of your metabolism, and specific interventions that you can make to, to actually act on, on those risks, to bring you, down You could risk. also be the first person for future generations to have that condition. Um, you know, it's the luck of the draw <laughs> in terms of how we're made up. Is this, I mean, we've all watched the science fiction movies, we've all seen the James Bond baddies. Um, is this a warm and fuzzy way of making DNA testing sort of acceptable and it's part of our lifestyles? Um, is there not a concern here that we're heading towards the world of designer babies and, and all well, of that sort of stuff as we start to <laughs> manipulate the wonder and the science that comes through DNA? I, I think, again, it's just important to be very specific about the different types of genetic testing. So when you're looking at low penetrance genetic testing that is enabling people to make lifestyle and health decisions, that, that's miles away from the concept of designer babies or movies like Gattaca, which gave genetics a, a bad name as a whole. So, you know, whether it's your uh, genealogy testing, looking at, at ancestry, uh, low penetrance testing such as we do for diet and nutrition, th there are just so many different types of genetic testing that it, it's a, 
it's a concern to lump everything into the same basket because that creates fear amongst the public that maybe doesn't understand all the differences between the different applications. So how are you finding acceptance then? Are people a little bit apprehensive? You want to what? You want to stick cotton wool in my mouth? I'm not a criminal. We don't deal with the with the public. We we go through medical practitioners. Mm. We've had an amazing uptake in South Africa in the last five years. So the medical industry is buying into this principle, they this are. concept? M more and more. You know, it started very much with the dietitians in South Africa. We've got a lot of allied medical practitioners on our network now, and more and more medical doctors are starting to attend training seminars and looking to incorporate the information into the medical practice. And we've built up in South Africa over the last few years one of the largest networks in the world of medical practitioners trained in nutrigenomics. Uh, nutrigenomics, right? Nutrigenomics, the nutrition and genetics together, um, which is a massive credit to the practitioners in South Africa, and it, it shows sort of an, an entrepreneurial and a, you know a, a desire to educate themselves further, which is um, which is great to see. A lot of people would be scared off by the by, by the cost. Um, we know that DNA testing is expensive. We're, certainly, the crime labs, for example, tell us it's expensive. It's delayed. That's why they can't expand the services they mm. offer. What does one expect to have to? stump up in order to get tested to begin a path like this? Thankfully the, the cost has come down over the last few years because of improving technologies in the lab. The DNA diet test that we spoke of you would pay 1500 rands for that and you could do all, all four of our tests mm. now for around the four and a half thousand rand mark. But it, it's about preparing yourself I suppose and mitigating risk into the future. You mitigate that risk now, you save over the longer term. And it's a once-off cost. Mm. You know, your, as I said, your genes don't change. So it's a once-off cost that will potentially save you a lot of money down the line in, in hopefully unnecessary healthcare expenses. Is it a test the whole family can use? So I, I get tested, will my kids be covered by it or do they need to have their own? They would need to have their yeah. own, but we are a little bit cautious around testing kids yeah. Too young. They're, yeah, they're that would, concerned, it didn't fall into it didn't fall into the trap there. <laughs> Danny, nice to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Danny May Mayersfield is the chief executive of DNA Analysis Biotechnology. Thank you for watching tonight. My producers tell me that if I get my DNA taken, I can lose a few kilos. I think I've just got to avoid tonight's hamburger and maybe go to the gym instead. That's it for now. Good night.